So why is this song so popular? Why did the sound of an inflatable clown toy falling down the stairs so capture the musical zeitgeist of September 2022? What all started with a Reddit post. Somebody had put together a playlist of songs for making love to, included this one on it for some reason, and couldn't understand why his girlfriend hated it because, to him, it had the perfect rhythm for doing the deed to. And so the internet did what the internet does and went absolutely buck wild with this trend. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Why? The question is, what is it about this rhythm that makes it so awkward? Was the original poster so wrong in thinking that it is the perfect rhythm for doing the deed to? I'm here to break down the music theory of this whole thing. Why embodiment of rhythm in beat perception is so important, why orchestration is important, and why microtonality might not be the best thing to include in your bedroom. This is the music theory of CBAT. This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream and my streaming service Nebula. How long before the Adam Neely video of him explaining how Seabat is actually a great song to get smashed to? Part one, the music theory. The experimental hip hop producer Hudson Mohawk first released the tune Seabat in 2011 on his album Satin Panthers. The tune is at 81 beats per minute. The kick drum has a resonant frequency of about 37 Hertz or roughly the note D, meaning that the song's key is in the key of D. Insert sex joke here. The main melody, if we're gonna call it that, is played on a very strange shrill synth patch that has a resonant frequency of about 2.5 kilohertz, which is roughly the same frequency of a baby crying. Nothing to get you more in the mood than the screams of an infant. This melody consists of two descending phrases. The first starting on the note B, and then repeating down a minor third on the note G sharp. This in music theory is called a sequence. Like Beethoven's fifth, it's the same idea repeated, but slightly lower. Technically speaking, CBAT is an example of a real sequence. The same intervals are repeated across both phrases. Using memes to teach music theory. Gotta love it. The pitches of CBAT are not quantized. They aren't locked to the 12 equal tempered tones of the piano. You could say that the melody is microtonal, although that is doing a disservice to microtonal melodies, which are actually melodic and singable. Because it's kind of microtonal, people seem to have interpreted the melody in slightly different ways on their equal tempered instruments. For example, many people seem to interpret the final note as an E natural instead of as an F. If you look at the waveform, it is technically closer to an F than an E, but the whole phrase starts on a B natural, and so ending on an E would mean ending down a perfect fifth. That perfect fifth arc from B to E might feel a little bit more natural to play, and so people are interpreting what is kind of not that musical of a melody in a more musical way, which I thought was pretty interesting. But the main identifying characteristic of CBAT is, of course, the rhythm. Shown here interpreted at 81 beats per minute, it's kind of syncopated in that it anticipates the second beat of the measure. It's roughly similar to some other rhythms like the 3-2 cascara pattern from Afro-Cuban music. Seabat's rhythm, though, is fairly distinctive and immediately identifiable, so much so that the partner of the original poster on Reddit could identify it without the song playing <laughs> purely based on the rhythm of their partner's thrusts. This detail really captured the imagination of many on TikTok, leading to a discussion about what would cause the Redditor to thrust this way, as well as the difference between beat and rhythm, and what in particular made CBET so egregious a choice when it came to bodily movement. You must thrust on a beat. That's a good beat. Like yeah. And so that's what we're going to explore now. What is it about this rhythm that makes the original poster's thrust game so weak. I have been on the internet a long time, but I have never seen a man whose thrust game is so f***ing bad that it has to be taken apart and analyzed by music theorists. Part two, rhythm and pulse. Entrainment is the process of moving your body along to a pulse or a beat. This is what happens when we dance or when we tap our foot along to a groove. There are some parts of this process which are probably innate. Newborn babies have been shown to entrain to pulses. In most Western styles of music, the pulse is regular. We call it isochronal. The beats occur at the same rate. In some other styles of music, like from the Balkans, for example, the pulses are non-isochronal. The beats might have different lengths. Whatever the case, entrainment happens when you and a bunch of other people 
feel those pulses together. Our ability to identify a pulse and entrain to it is likely evolutionarily important for humans, because if we're all moving in the same way, we can establish a collective identity. This can instill trust and strengthen social bonds. This can also be important in attracting mates. Charles Darwin was among the first to note that among many species, mating calls are often regular and repetitive because, as we all know, rep rep repetition legitimizes. A potential mate's ability to regulate their movements to a pattern could signify how well their brain works. Brains are important, I've been told. Better brain, better mate. There is some research to suggest that beat perception in the brain, how we're able to identify the beat of a given song, is based on the vestibular system, the system in the body which regulates spatial awareness and balance. Think about what it's like to balance on something. Think about all of those micro adjustments that your body must make, conscious or otherwise, to keep from falling over. The vestibular system regulates all of these micro adjustments, as well as the micro adjustments necessary for you to sync yourself with a given piece of music, and also sync yourself with another human being. Moving your whole body along to the C-bat rhythm is profoundly unbalanced and awkward. It's difficult to entrain with others when you move like this. One potential theory for climax is based on this idea of entrainment, your body's ability to regulate pulse and balance. The ability to generate precise and flexible rhythmic patterns, and to do so over an extended period of time, could function as an honest indicator of organismic quality. So not to music theory explain sex more than I already have, but this is potentially a reason why music can be good to have sex to, because both people can entrain to the music, and then also potentially entrain to each other. Very wholesome. Trust me guys, I've done the scientific research. I have the receipts. Rhythm makes you hot. Now, is there anything inherent in Seabat, the song, that would make it more difficult to entrain to the underlying pulse and not the rhythm? Well, music that we find pleasant is generally easier to entrain to, so even though the pulse is steady, Seabat, with its caterwauling microtonal melody in the same frequency spectrum as that of crying infants is probably scientifically, statistically, not a good song to have sex to. It sounds like what an NFT would sound like. But is it just that? Could you potentially entrain to see that if you just remove that melody? Is there something that we could do so that we could actually, you know, get into the groove of it and not feel super self-conscious? I decided to test that. Is this the best song for lovemaking? This theory says no. Part three, putting Seabat to the test. Last week, I was on tour with my band Sungazer. Every night, our friend and tour manager, Brian Plouts, would wander out there onto the stage with his saxophone and break out into Seabat. <laughs> Crowds collectively would lose their minds. <laughs> There are several things to be learned with this little experiment. I do have a habit of using my audiences as testing grounds for rhythmic theories. Number one is orchestration matters. The exact same musical material, the same melody, the same rhythm, more or less, can sound radically different if you play it on different instruments and in different musical contexts. The original version of Seabat sounded quite different from the version that we played to audiences. Number two, there's nothing inherently unmusical or even un about the tune Seabat. The rhythm can be rearranged and reinterpreted just fine. Hudson Mohawk was drawing on the rhythmic vocabulary of hip hop and trap music. And that rhythmic vocabulary can be remixed and reinterpreted in many, many different ways. There is nothing inherent in this rhythm or the beat that is bad for entrainment. Audiences across the US could headbang and freak out totally fine. The reason why the original sounds so off-putting is because of that damn synth sound. <laughs> Seabat is likely going to be a persistent musical meme because it has such an identifiable rhythm and the context for the meme is, well, yeah. My prediction, and you can quote me on this, is that Seabat is going to function as a rhythmic rickroll. When you least expect it, some drummer, some instrumentalist, somebody oh is going to hit you with 
bum, 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 bum. Since the pitch content is malleable also, you can take the basic melodic contour and adapt it to different tonalities and harmonies and whatever, and it'll still sound like Seabat. So enterprising jazz musicians will now have another annoying thing to slip into their solos instead of just the lick. I'm so sorry. The core of any musical meme is a remixable reference that often functions as an inside joke, an inside joke that is apparently shared with anybody who was on TikTok in September of 2022. Seabat is the perfect musical meme. Short, recognizable, malleable into many musical contexts, and I'm guessing will have a shelf life beyond its initial conception. Seabat is a microtonal reharmonization of all I want for Christmas is you. Specifically the line, I just want you for my own more than you will ever know. I just want you for my own more than you could ever know. I'm probably gonna eat my words. It's probably already dead by the time I release this video, but hey, time will tell. If you wanna see me reacting to other musical memes, dead or otherwise, I have some bonus content available exclusively over on my streaming service, Nebula. Nebula is kinda of like YouTube, but it's really just the content that you would actually want to watch. You can find all of my stuff over there, as well as some of the best videos from your favorite educational creators. It's a great place to watch and discover quality content ad-free, as well as support the people that you really love over on YouTube. Sense. By clicking the link on the screen, right here, you're not only supporting this channel, but all of the creators over on Nebula as we create a platform that aims to engage the world in a more meaningful way, which means, yes, talking about Seabat and the musicological discourse that comes with such a thing. <laughs> this is my job. Peace.